Shalom to everyone. Today we're learning Zerah Shemshon, Parashat Vayeshev, letter Zayin, number seven. This shiur is being I'm sponsored. I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm not available. It should be with Hatzlach. This shiur... This year is being sponsored by three families. Family number one is from Chicago, sponsored by Mrs. Luda and her family by the name. So she's dedicating the shiur on behalf of her, behalf of her son, Ishai Aviel Matatia. On his birthday, may Hashem give him Hatzlacha Bechol Ma'asei Adam Arichud Yamim Veshanim. And also her husband, Le'uven, Matatia Latzlacha Bimtziat Avoda. And she says, thank you. I want to tell you to find a job. I want to tell you, Re'uven Matatia, this person, he made tremendous Kiddush Hashem, and we all have to pray for him to find job speedy. Because they offered him, oh, you work on Shabbat? Or we will fire, fire you. That happened in Chicago. And he tried to play with them a couple of months. Didn't work. And now he got fired. And not only that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He got fired by Reshaim. But he got uh, a perfect job position by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Because if you have Emunah and Bitachon in Hashem, Hashem is with you. Baruch HaGever, Asher Iftach. And he did bitachon and emunah in Hashem, and definitely Hashem will surely find him a better job with a better income and with more spending time with his entire family. Be'ezad Hashem, there should be matzliach in everything they do. Amen. Also, this shiur is being sponsored by Minu family from LA. This family, they do a lot, and also Hashem makes them a lot of miracles. Be'ezad Hashem, I don't want to make Nedarim. Listen, I don't know LA, it's not Queens. But Be'ezad Hashem, when her son gets married, Bli Neder, me and Nisim will go to uh, her son's uh, wedding. Be'ezad Hashem, Bli Neder. Bli Neder. If they'll send us invitation, we will, de- we will be there by Zad Hashem. Also, <clears throat> so, so she's praying that her son should find Eshet Chal. His name is Shohin Daniel Ben Minu Miriam Chedva. So they should have Besorot Tovot and Lufu Ashlema to her husband, to the entire family. Amen. And the last one, I want to say thank you to Rabbi Gabriel. Ben Nisan Kusayev. He, people offered him to give some sponsorship. He said, only I know one good place. I mean, a lot of good places, but one of those is, he said, Zel Hashem Shon by Rabbi Akilov. So these people donated, uh, sponsored the Shi'ur today. Laatzlachad Michael Ben Ira Kusayev. Be'ezad Hashem. He should find Bazug Na'abe Karol. Amen. Together they should grow in building by the name of Israel, keeping Tara da Mishpacha, growing Torah and Mitzvot, and in the name of Amen. Amen. And also, Binyamin Ben, I believe it's Margot, right? Marto, uh, Marta. Okay, Binyamin Ben Marta Kanchorov. Uh, he has girls, Hashem should give him baby boys. Be'ezrat Hashem. Did you tell him to buy Rabbeinu Bechaya, to keep it at home? This is from Rabbi Yoel Teitelbaum. Okay? Uh, make sure it happens because few people already gave me nice orders to get some Rabbeinu Bechayas to their house and Be'ezad Hashem will be dancing in their son's breed. You don't have to give me Sandag, it's fine. Sandag Rishon also fine. But if without Sandag Rishon, just being in your Simcha is my Simcha. Also, Ribi Ben Natalia Mirakov. Hashem should give him Banim Zecharim Laavodato Barach. Baby boys, Be'ezad Hashem. And those who are listening to our shiur, tolerating me, 
Okay, Hashem should give you bracha and aslacha, parnasat or nachat from all your children. She got no better nomis, no masim to be mecheni, not so much. Amen. This week's parasha, parashat vayeshev. Not only uh, my name is Yosef, this is why I like this parasha. No, but I like this parasha because this parasha is, I don't know, I feel a certain connection with this parasha. And I taught many years in some yeshivot. Uh, when I had classroom, I was teaching this parasha. You have no idea. So many details, so many nice insights in this week's parsha. I would like to go from something that I really love, even though we said it a few times. I would like to go from beginning to this, and then we'll go from here and on, building on the parasha. Parashat Vayeshev. Everything in the Torah, any letter, any comma, any dot, Missing letter, adding letter, everything has big, big meanings. It's not for no reason. Everything has deep meanings. Parsha Vayeshev is taken from where? From four people that they touched Yaakov Avinu's life in not positive, but in negative way. It is not because they wanted to, just because many things happen. Some say it happened because Yaakov Avinu went to his blind father and got bracha saying that he was a sow. Some say no. Yaakov, in, in order to become Yaakov, in, he had to go through four steps. So what are the steps? Look at the word Vayeshev. Word Vayeshev. Vav, Yud, Shin, Bet. Vav stands for second letter from the name Yosef. Okay. Yud stands for second letter from the name Dina. Yosef was sold. Dina was kidnapped. Shin is second letter from the word Esav. Esav, since the mother's stomach he was bothering Yaakov. And bad is second letter from the name Lavan. So these four people caused a lot of damage in Yaakov in his life. This is why when he was by age 147, 130, when he was 130, he looked like he was like 250 years old. When Paro looked at him, Paro said, come on, look, you so old. He said, oh, I, had enough, uh, I had enough good days in my life. This is why I look so bad. Now, I would like to go with you to some nice places over here to share with you some nice kudushim. Bli neder. Hey, we will be talking about dreams a lot. Zayin, Zera Shimshon talks about dreams. And you should know, all those who are here, all those who are not here, all those who are sponsoring, those who are listening, there's a lot of opportunities. You will get your messages today. Everyone has his own message. Things that bothering him five, five months, six months, one year, two years, you will get a lot of answers today. Just make sure, find your spot. What's the reason that you're here today? Or you're listening to the show today? Number one. Parsha talks about <coughs> Zerah Shimshon, dreams. Yosef at Sadiq saw two type of dreams. What was the first dream? They were huh? tying bundles, okay? And then what happened? Brothers' bundles bow down to his bundle, right? Then he saw another dream. What was the second dream? Stars. Stars, stars bow down to his star, 11 stars. And then sun and moon also bow down. Then what happened? Brothers couldn't take it anymore. They said, guys, we're going tonight to Shechem. We'll go to Shechem. We're going to take care of father's animals. What did they want to take care of? It says they went to take care of father's animals. I believe in Sefer, may I am, I saw something nice. This is all pre Zera Shimshon. Okay? We need to get some nice boost in order to go to Zera Shimshon today. And we will know there's a lot of things about dreams. It's important to know because sometimes people see dreams and they are not calm. They really bothered all day. They think, oh, a few days ago I went to Rawokin and I see Rawokin looking for the third guy to sit as Dayanim in order to nullify a woman's dream. She saw a terrible dream. And it was like 20 minute procedure, you know. She reads one time, we read seven times, she reads one time, we read seven times, and go back and forth, back and forth. And Baruch Hashem, 
Uh, she came out of there with a smile. She came, if you would see her face, she was an older lady, like 55, 65 years old. She was crying, sad, I saw this dream, you know, she thinks already that's all, she's gone. Dreams are a message from Hashem. Person doesn't see seven dreams, Bal, yeah, Bal Yipaket, Sava, Sheva, right? Person see, doesn't see dreams for seven days, it's called bad. Why Hashem doesn't want to have connection with you for seven days? You know, you should be thinking about it. I believe in Gemara, Brachot page uh, 14a, Yudalet Amodalef on the bottom. Okay, now it says, brothers went, they were fed up with Yosef's dreams, they said, I'd come. We have to get rid of the guy. Coming every day with his dreams. What are they thinking about him? Making up stories, you know? He does the real dreams. He's thinking about it all day. And at night he pretends as if it's his dreams. Even though he would see them, it's all fake. So now they really want to get rid of him. And they went. They said, you know, we'll go. Abba, we're going to take care of your sheep in Shechem. You know what Mepharshim said? Lashi says, they went to take care of their father's sheep. Not true. They went to take care of themselves. So why did they go? Look what it says. Pidush Lashi, she'alchuli rot et atzman. They went to take care of themselves. Yeshloma she'alchuli ilmod. Some say they went to learn Torah. Heich ovdim et Hashem itbarach ba'achila ushtia. How to serve Hashem? In eating and drinking. How did we finish today's uh, Rashi? Hilchot Seuda. Why? There is a way to talk. There is a way to live. There is a way to walk. And there is a way to eat. The way you eat. Here. You could see if person has Yilat Shamayim or not. You know. I was stuck on so badly. Someone asked me for Shiduch reference. I said it's a good guy. This, this. Everything is good. I mean, He was a good guy. He is a good guy. Then that girl's father calls me and says, Rabbi, he said he's a good guy, right? How come I gave him a few chips he started eating without bracha? Wow. <laughs> what are you talking about? To see if person, <laughs> to see if person has Yilat Shamayim or not, see how he makes brachot. The way you make brachot, the way you in eating, this is how you see if person has fear of God. So brothers, they said, listen, we're not ready. We're judging yourself. Maybe we are into food too much. Maybe we have nefesh behemit. This is why we want to get rid of him. Let's go fix our eating. And if after that we'll find out that this guy is really causing a spouse, then we'll get rid of him. Really? They went to, they're going to serve Hashem better into brachot, into kavanot, everything. And they got this. Sheken ketiv, vayashu lechol lachem. Vayashu, okay, and, and they said to eat bread. What do you mean they said? They deserved. They deserved. Then they brings another uh, digdukim under the word lechem, lamet, ched, mem. I'm not going to go to this now. One other time. Now I want to go with you a little bit deeper than this. Yosef HaTzadik, Torah calls him what? By he Yosef, Yefe Toar Vife Mare. Yosef was, how you say Yefe Toar? Beautiful of appearance? Handsome. handsome. Vife Mare, and he was beautiful of appearance. He was handsome and he was beautiful. Who wants to be beautiful? Who wants to be handsome? Do you want Torah to call you handsome? I have a remedy for you. Certain pill you take, you become handsome. Huh? Who wants? Yeah. Guys, talk to me. Why are you falling asleep on me? I'm not that boring. No, I thought you were. Nah, boring. boring I am, yes, but not that boring. Kind of huh? Kind of what kind of pill? Kind of pill. Handsome pill. There is. How big is it? Let me show it to you. Look inside. Look inside. See on Gandalf today, Raf today. Why he or Sevi Vetar Vemar? 
יפה תואר, גימטריה is what? יפה is גימטריה 95 פלוס תואר, תואר is how much? 607. 607 פלוס 95 will be? 702. אה, תודה. עולה כמניין שבת. 702 Why Yosef has to keep Shabbat? Can you tell me? By Avram Avinu doesn't say Avram dash Shabbat. Yosef dash Shabbat. Why? Shabbat is one of the three signs that we have connection. Covenant with Hashem. Tefillin is Brit. Brit is Brit. And Shabbat is Brit. So Shabbat is Brit. Brit is Yosef. Yosef Keep Shabbat, and therefore he is a sign of Brit. Brit means connection, connection with Hashem. Now let's go further. Comes Arizal. Arizal says Yosef bechinat Shabbat. Yosef atzadik is corresponding Shabbat. Yefem mar e. What means Yefem mar e? He's a beautiful of appearance. Ole keminian. יפה, ויפה, מראה, comes out, גימטריה, 347, 347, which is the words, באל, שין, יוד, the way it's written, השם's name, in the מזוזות, מזוזה, באל, שין, דלת, יוד, and שין, דלת, יוד, is the sign that your house is protected. What's called, why, why is it called מזוזות? Because it's זז מוות. It pushes away death from your house. Wow. So, so what pushes away the death from your house? The sign. Sign is under mezuzah. Ah, if so, then mezuzah is also sign. It's also breed. Shin Dalet Yud is breed. Yosef HaTzadik is breed. So, Yifei Tohar, Vifei Mamre, Shabbat, Shin Dalet Yud. Make sense? Yeah. Boring? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Number two. You walk in the middle of the street. How do you know Aram Avinu, Yitzchak Avinu, Yaakov Avinu is with you? In everywhere you go? Shin stands for Yaakov Avinu. Why? Shin three heads. So when Yaakov passed away, he said to his sons, guys, take my coffin, three tribes from each side, and bury me like this. No one was carrying Yaakov Avinu's coffin, only 12 tribes. Why? Shin, 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 Shin. And he is, the letter Shin is under Tfilin. When you put Tfilin, Shin. You kiss Mezuzah, Shin. Yaakov Avinu is on you. Dalet is who? It's Yaakov We said it thousand and one times. When person gets slaughtered, chas ve shalom, it's Chagavin who put his neck on the altar, right? If he would get slaughtered, knife would finish in the back. That is what? Let a dalet, dalet of the tefillin. So dalet is, it's Chagavin. And you, this Avraham Avinu. Echad haya Avraham. Avraham was alone. And Hashem tested him how many times? Ten times. How do you say ten tests? Asara nisyonot. This is why we got Pesach on Korban Pesach. When did we take it? On the 10th of Nisan. We kept it for four days and then 14th we made Shrita, right? Korban Pesach. Right or wrong? Where we got this sign from? The 10th of Nisan? Because of Avram Avinu. And why that Shabbat? Huh? Why is that Shabbat called? Why is that Shabbat? No, people who get vaccine, this bothers you know. Uh, why the, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Why is that Shabbat called Shabbat Agadol? Because we follow Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu is Ava Gadol, big papa. Grandfather, great father. So Shabbat Agadol goes after Avram Avinu. Okay, now. Let's continue. Who is in education here? Rabbi. Rabbi Tion one. Maybe a little bit. Uh, who is in education here? If you, between me and you, if you want to save, Rabbi Aaron, you with me? Yes. If you want to save somebody's life, I promise you, send this shoe to him. I'll show you something. I never saw this in my life. But if you really pay attention, you will cry. Okay? Look what happens. Who 
saw Yosef first. Yosef was coming. Who saw? Shimon. Levi, Levi and Shimon. Levi said, Hine bala chalomot halazeba. Oh, the owner of the dreams came. He saw the dreams, right? Made everybody crazy with these dreams. So what happened? Le Levi said it. Shimon brought him closer and boom, hit him once. Huh? Shimon hit Yosef. Yosef fainted. Ooh, ooh. Rabiga. Psh, psh, psh. Guys, get them closer, chair. Please, 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 please. Rabbi Rafael, thank you. Mr. Tachalov, thank you. The third one, I don't know so good. Guys, you're so on time. Something I'm about to say, you're going to love it. But I'll start from my fa father's phrase. My father used to say, in three situations, don't put your life in danger. In three situations, do not put your life in danger. Number one, you don't know how to swim, don't go into the water. Oh, there's a lifeguard. Lifeguard's not going to help you. Don't go into the water. Don't put your life in danger. You don't know how to swim, stay away. You see, I don't know how to swim, I don't go. Number two, it says, how do they say, warning? Caution, caution, what is it? Caution, it's a warning. Sir. Caution. Yeah. Don't walk there. He says, uh, why not love to walk there? Wall will collapse. I'm going to say, Shema Yisrael is going to help me. It's not going to help you. Master said, don't go there. Don't go there. Same thing. Number three, you and somebody fought. Your cousin, your brother, your friend, your partner, your neighbor. Fought, seriously. And you got bumped into a certain party. Just come outside. Don't go out. Why am I going to show myself I'm a, uh, I say, truce, you know, I say, I'm scary cat, I'm scared. Yes, yes, show yourself scary, but you're going to go home live. You have wife, children, you have parents, you have, you have, you have family here. Many people wanted to prove they're strong and they never return home. That's wrong. Yosef Atzadik comes to him, Gabriela Malach, and says, my friend, don't go there. Your brothers... Yatsu mize. You know what Yatsu mize means? They took themselves out of brotherhood. They want to kill you. What did he say? Ah, they're my brothers, don't worry. And, they, and he went. He was a big mistake. But let me tell you something very deep. You with me? Yosef came. Levi saw. Shimon punched. Yosef fainted. Each one of them, when they were punching, they punched with Hashem's name. It only was by Hashem's name. Yosef fainted, they threw Yosef into the pit. They looked at Yosef as a Rasha Gamur. Why? Speaks Lashon Ara. He speaks Lashon Ara. You know, Chafetz Chaim says, what means Sinat Chinam? You're hating somebody for no reason. How can you hate somebody for no reason? When you speak bad about someone. That is Sinat Chinam. <coughs> if person will make commitment not to speak about anyone in the back of someone, we will have tomorrow Beit HaMikdash. The commitment. This is why Chafetz Chaim knew the power of Sinat Chinam. He wrote Shmirat HaLashon, Shmirat HaLashon. Why? Because this is what causes Sinat Chinam. This is what causes the destruction. So what happened now? They threw Yosef into the pit, thinking he's Rasha. They did not see what there? Snakes and scorpions. It says, The pit is empty, there's no water. Yeah, Gemara says, what if there is no Snakes and scorpions were there. How come they didn't see? It was more than 20 amot. More than 20 amot, you don't see there, you don't see Sukkot, Shach, then you don't see Menorah, not kosher. This is why we have an Hanukkah parsha of Yosef Atzadik, because everything has to do connection with the Hanukkah. But let me tell you something. One more time. I'm giving you this introduction, because this introduction needs to be known in every yeshiva, every school, every teacher needs to know, every parent needs to know. They don't know, problem. This is what I'm going to tell you now. Scary and important. Important. You don't need to quote my name to tell somebody. But this is, you have to know this. Reuben came. Reuben came. He looked at in the pit. Because he was not there when they sold Joseph, right? What did he say? Hayeled and Enu. The boy is not here. Va'ani, ana aniba. Where can I go now? 
where can I go now? There's a deep explanation with Guru Ben, what's going on here? But short, short, what's going on here? Al derech ben shana sha'ul be molcho. When we say yelet, means child. Child means like one years old. Shaul HaMelech, when he was king, Torah calls him one. But how old he was when he became king, Shaul HaMelech? Huh? Thirteen? How old was Shaul HaMelech? Thirty. He was thirty years old. Thirty years old, Torah calls him one years old. Why? Because he was sinless. He had no sin. He was pure, like a one-year-old baby. Keben Shana, Keben Shana, Shelo Ta'am, Ta'am Chet. He never tasted sin. Shaul HaMelech, no sins. Veze HaYelet Shelo Ta'am Ta'am Chet. You know why Reuven calls Yosef Yelet? He says, this kid is a pure kid. He did not taste no sin. But let me tell you the phrase. What means HaYelet? You know HaYelet stands for? The boy. You know the child stands for? Guys, put your seatbelts. Rashi Tevot, HaYelet. Haben Yekara Lediukna Demalka Hayeled, the boy, any boy, stands for what? Haben Yekara. What does that mean? A child. Important, precious, like, not like, to, Lady Yukna, to the image, the Malka of Hashem. Every child is so precious, he has image of Hashem in him. Can you imagine when you throw one kid out of the yeshiva? You threw Hashem's image out of your yeshiva. You think you would be able to sleep here? If you, even if you would be able to sleep here, you won't be able to sleep there. This is... Hayeled, the child, the child, one more time. You know what Reuven felt? He said, guys, we lost image of Hashem from our family. We're not the same family anymore, we're done. You guys threw Yosef away. Yosef is not only, there's an image of Hashem in him. This is what we lost in the family. One more time. Hab, habo, sorry, I read it wrong. Habo, not Haben, Habo, in him. Yekara, in him. There is a preciousness. In him there is a preciousness of the image of Hashem. Every baby has preciousness, has beauty of the image of Hashem. This is the main goal why we are here today. To know every child is precious. Could be not so precious to you. But Hashem says, my image is shining through this kid. My light is going out from this kid. And now we could understand what every child means. This is second introduction. You want to go to the third introduction or we do after Zerah Shimshon? The third? You got it. This is from my Rebbe. I'll tell you, I would never in my life understand Chumash if I would never sit by Rav Aaron Walking's table. You know, sometimes I do weird things. For example, I'll give you an example. Sometimes I go to my students or friends' weddings. They tell Rabbi, Rabbi, I know you know how to play drum. Please, please take it. I don't want to do it. I say to myself, I'm going to look like a fool right now. I need, you think I need this? Then I turn around and I always think like, what my Rebbe would do? What now Aaron Walkin would do? You know, he came to my wedding, he was a little bit not feeling well. He had procedure on the heart month before. He came to my wedding, he saw me. He right away grabbed me from my hands and dancing with me. I said, Rebbe, Rebbe, you're not allowed. He says, I'm in your party now, forget about me. This was our Aaron Walkin. I'm at your party now. Forget about me. It's you. If someone comes to your party and gives you attention that you need, you know what you feel? You feel like, whoa, I feel like support here. Can you imagine in your party, when you make a party, someone tells you, why did you put me on with him on the table? I don't want to sit with him. You're done. 
You don't know how to bring your daughter to the chupa. You don't know how to come with the chatan and kalah inside dancing. Or you have to find a different spot now. Tipa <laughs> pao. This, that person cares about you. Or he cares about his stomach. Or he cares about himself. If he cares about you, he says, listen, hello, put me by the door. I don't care. Let me, you know what happened once? I really had tears on Rosh Hashanah, on Yom Kippur. First Yom Kippur, who remembers? We had in, uh, first Yom Kippur is Shah Eliyahu. We had in Fartuna. Because listen, Shul is small, we, so we took Fartuna. 45 people came out of, out of nowhere, suddenly. Oh no, no, sorry, sorry, it was in Amadeus. It was the second year of our Shul. 45 people came out of, out of nowhere and there's no space. You know what I saw? Our congregants standing on their chairs and calling people inside and giving them their chairs to sit. This made me have tears. Like, wow. And you keeper? You know, you have to stand all day. For next four hours, you have to stand. He says, I don't care. That is Yom Kippur. I want, to make, I want to make him sit here. And this is a life of a Jewish person. Why? Because every human being has image of Hashem. Now, my Rebbe brings a beautiful Hidush on the parasha that he says himself on the bottom. He says, so many years I tried to look for answer, I didn't have. Until this year, I bumped into the Sefer called Bedaat Torah. And he gives the answer. I want to ask you a question. No one sees you. They see my face only. Tell me, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Anybody, anybody. Who are you? One word, huh? Mikhail. Who are you, Mikhail? You have to come out to the answer that everyone has the same answer. Who are you? Hashem son. Who are you in the end of the day? Who are you? Israel. Who are you? Who are you? Jewish. Anyone comes with this answer, right? Who the word Jew came from? Yehudi. Came from Yehuda. Yehudi. Abraham is Yehudi, no? Okay, you got it. Uh, Abraham is Yehudi. Uh, uh, Yehuda is Yehudi. We, we got the name Yehuda from Yehuda. Yehudi, Jew from Yehuda. Why? Why we got the name Yehudi, Jew? From Yehuda, asking Rav Aaron Walkin, Zichron Nivracha, and he gives the answer. You know why? Because Yehuda had two sons, Er and Onan. They got married to Tamar. They got married to Tamar, and they didn't want her to make children, to get pregnant. And then what happened? Hashem got upset. Er passed away, and then Onan passed away because he followed his brother's path. Then a while later, a few years later, when Yehuda already sent Tamar back home, he said, wait till my younger son Shelah becomes Bar Mitzvah, then I'll call you back. Shelah already 14 years old, and nobody calls her back. So then Yehuda's wife, Batshua, right? Passed away. She passed away, and now Yehuda is going after seven days, after Shiva, he's going to uh, shear, cut hair of his sheep. Him and his friend Adulami, they're going and on the way they see a woman who doesn't belong to no one. But really that was who? Tamar. Tamar is door in law. She, she heard that he's going up to the uh, Timnata. He's going up to Timnata. So what happened? She went on the way by the crossroad and she made sure that wherever they go, they'll see her. So they start talking. He said, listen, I want to marry you. I'm talking clean because this is the way you're supposed to be spoken here. He said, I want to be with you, whatever. I want to take you as a wife. She said, no, I mean, be with me. You got to pay me something. So he said, fine, I'll send you tomorrow two goats. She said, tomorrow, Nasia, Nacht. Right now. Give me something now. He said, fine. So what he gave her? His staff, his stamp, and his coat. He gave her. Uh, Cain. Staff, no? That's Staff. that's Cain. Then he gave her a ring, stamp, and then he gave her. What's he saying? Cool. That was also Are you trying to tell me about uh, if a person wants to do uh, Yibum, Shnurok, Tufli? This was trying to, I don't know. What, I don't want to talk about it. Let's stick with simple stuff. Okay, so what happened now? It's okay. 
מעיל, נו, היא גיבה, אוקיי. חותם לך, פתיל לך, אומת לך אשר בידיך, נו. פתיל לך. אוקיי. So now, יהודה, give to her, he was with her. Next day, next day, he finds, uh, he sends Adulami with two goats. He cannot find her. So he starts going neighbor to neighbor, people to people. Shkuna, Yehuda said, hey, stop, you didn't find her? So, okay, it's okay, close, why? Now you're going to make Hilul Hashem here. People will find out. No, huh? keep it, keep it down. Three months later, Arav, Yehuda is a judge. He's sitting as a judge. They brought Tamar. She's expecting now, you know, Hukar Ubra means, you see that she's pregnant, three months. So now they see that she's pregnant, they bring to Yehuda, Yehuda says, oh, She's like a daughter of a coin. Take her out and burn her. How burn? Put some iron, melted iron into the throat. And lead. Iron, lead, not something. Oh, sorry, sorry. My Bukhar in English. You know? Huh? Serefa. So, she has to die this way. Now she goes out. She goes out. And she comes back with the Three things. And she says, give it to the guy and ask him who is it belong to. Vayaker Yehuda, Yehuda recognized. Vayomer Tzadeka Mimeni. Uh-oh, she's right. She's right for truthful. It's from me. She's pregnant from me. She doesn't have to die. Because I didn't give her to marry my third son. So she found a way to come to me. So now she brings two opinions and he did not know her anymore. Some say he didn't stop living with her. Some say he didn't continue living with her anymore. So one second over here. One second. What's going on here? Yehuda is looking at these objects. Yehuda is looking at these objects, and in front of him there is two questions here. What are the questions? Who can help me? Or I. Rav Menashe? Was Machs the Tzadik? Okay. Sorry, sorry. Because this, 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 this Chidush, I really enjoyed. And if I'm st stopping Zera Shimshon for a few more minutes to tell you this, guys, my Rebbe was looking for this answer more than 20 years. A year before he passed away, he found this Sefer. And he gave the Chidush. Listen to this Pshat. Yehuda is having in front of him two steps over here. A, oh, I'm willing to kill this woman who is my wife and my two sons, which is my continuation. Or I'm willing to kill my name and get embarrassed. But this embarrassment, not forever, two, three years, five years, ten years, people talk about it and then we'll call off. Here I'm losing for good, my family, my two children and my wife. Here I'm losing my name. Huh? She was twins pregnant, no? Peretz, Zarach. And Mashiach comes out from there. Do you know why we are called... Yehudi, because we, when we are wrong, we admit, yes, I did it, I'm sorry. Just because of Yehuda. Excuse me. Excuse me. Here, if he's going to say, it's not me, he's losing his family members. Three people dying. So therefore, he has to say, it's me, because he doesn't want them to die. Just because of this, you say... We called you Udi. Do you understand the question? If he doesn't have no gain, I understand you right. But he's gaining here. His future wife and there are twins. Three people. He doesn't want them to die. Therefore he says what? From me. So, so he's gaining. So why are you still? Let him get embarrassed. He doesn't mind. Huh? They were selfish. As long as the truth is there. Yeah, but. But, but you don't understand, he's gaining. When you gain something, you can't, you can't bring such a, give, give such a big cover to a person. And what? Every Jew is called Yudi because of that. 
I'm forced to read inside one line and then I'll tell you what does that mean. The reason why we are called Yehudim, Jewish people, because we believe in Hashem. And with this, we always are thankful to Hashem for great things He does for us. Look what Targum Yonatan says on Yehuda. Second. Do 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 do. Look what says Targum Yonatan. Ala Pasuk. Yehuda ata yoducha achecha. Yehuda, you are known to your brothers. Look, Targum Yonatan saying, Yehuda ant odita al uvde de Tamar. You admit it. And the case of Tamar that you admitted the truth. Against your will, you got embarrassed in public, but you still admit, admitted the truth. Begin kach lecha yehudun achich. Because of this, all your brothers will be called what yehudun. Admitters. Ve'itkerun yehudain al shmach, and they will be called yehudim because of your name. Now I'm showing you the last piece. Omnam yesh lomar bepshitut shakol inyan echad. All this is one topic. Shamodeh la emet hareu makir u modeh shesh bore olam. When you admit to the truth, you know and you admit that there is God in the world. Look how it works, guys. You don't see some deep point over here. When Yehuda was asked from Tamar haker na. Please recognize the same words what he said to his father, Akher, now. He got me that, can I get me that? But when she said, please recognize, that moment, Tamar did not say please to Yehuda. She said, please to Hashem. She said, Hashem, please put fear in Yehuda's heart to admit. Please, Hashem. You know what Yehuda means? A Jew who has belief and fear of God in his heart. Because of this, he's willing to admit. This is Yehuda. Now I'm reading it inside. And with this we'll conclude and we'll down, then begin our Zeresh and show, which will take only 15 minutes, Bli Nether. <laughs> Having you near me, I get to give nice introduction, my brother. <laughs> guys, one more time. I'll tell you guys, I see you, you know, after a long while. Today you came here. You know you have no idea how much you made me happy. I'll keep you here till twelve o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but uh, but uh, no no, fifteen minutes. I'll let you go, guys. Twenty minutes. Okay. Thirty. What do you need, Bachim? What do you need? Which one? This one. Let's go. Uh huh. You want to take it to him and find out from him. Good afternoon. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Omnam yes, no matter what you do, she will only be one. All this is one topic. 
When person admits to the truth, he knows there is God in the world. And this will cause him to admit to the truth if he sins. Now, can you imagine? The whole Yom Kippur is what? Person says, Hashem, I'm sorry. When person can say that? When he knows there is God. So, him not saying sorry, he doesn't believe in God. And also, to thank Hashem and to praise Him. And when she said, please recognize, not recognize the clothes, not recognize the, the stick, she said, recognize Hashem. Please, I beg you, recognize there is God. He sees everything. He knows everything. Admit to the truth because he's looking at you. She basically, she woke him up to recognize there is Hashem. And therefore, Yehuda is forced to admit to the truth. So now, the question is, why we are called Yehudim? Because we believe there is Hashem, and this is what will cause us to always be truthful and to admit to the truth. Now we could start Zera Shimshon. Before we start Zerah Shimshon, it will take exactly 10 minutes. Guys, I'm telling you, it's a very short piece. But before that, I want to tell you one thing. A lot of people being bothered by dreams, 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 you know. There are three sections of dreams. Three sections of dreams, says Marsha. First part of dreams, first part of night, second part of night, and the third part of night. If you see... The first part of that, let's say, what normal, today we're not like Gemara time. Today, what time normally people go to sleep? Huh? 12? 12. What time normally people wake up? 6, we'll put 7. He wants to, he wants to say 4.30, listen guys, you gotta sleep, listen, listen. You need to sleep, you need to be healthy, you know. I sleep... Very nice at night. Uh, uh, so let's split it in three. Fine, you want to say six o'clock in the morning? Okay, 12 to six. Split it in three. From 12 to two, one section. Two to four, second. Four to six, third. Okay, we have three sections at night. Okay? You see the person over there, Milano? See Milan over there? She wants to play with you. Say hi to her. Anytime you see the dream on the first third of the night, first try. <laughs> Talk nice. I'm joking. Uh, on the first two hours of the night, if you see on the first two hours of the night, fake dream. Why? There are, uh, some say too much food. No, Chinese food doesn't stay long, that long. Uh, uh, first two hours is fake dream. Why? Because whatever you're thinking throughout the day, this is what you see. So don't pay attention to that dream. Oh, I saw my great-grandfather got up, said to me, hello, and pushed me to himself. <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry about it. Shale Eliyahu needs you, okay? Uh, this is fake dream. First two hours, fake dream. Second two hours... Uh, it will be expensive, yeah. but uh, second two hours is second two hours. This is the shedim time. You know they come out. What time they come out? Midnight. When the shedim come out? Chatzot. Some say as soon as dawn be no, night begins. Okay, so shedim come out and they put in your brain bad thoughts. So from two to four, also don't pay attention to that dream. The third section of the night, real, true dreams. They have nothing to do with your thoughts. They have nothing to do with demons. This is a pure dream, signal from Hashem. This is the dream that you wake up from in the morning. So these dreams, you need to pay attention. The question is, when Yosef Asadik saw dreams, which dreams he saw? First third of the night? Second, third of the night, or oh, so dreams by the morning. 
He saw Jews by the morning. And he knew this is straight message of Hashem. Yeah, yeah. Message from Hashem is called Nebu our prophecy. Therefore, he was walking behind the brother. Guys, I want to tell you a dream. They don't want to hear him. Man. He repeats and repeats, repeats and repeats. Why? Prophecy. Prophet always has to be talking about the dreams. Uh, about, about prophecy. So Yosef also had to be talking about the dreams all the time. So now, let's look inside. As I promised you, by 10 we'll be done. We'll be done by 10. Look inside. Pasuk. Brothers threw Yosef into the pit, right? And they said, what? Now we will see what will happen his dreams. One second. What they should say, what happened with his dreams in past tense, not what will happen. It's wrong. Grammar, wrong tense. What will happen? What do you mean what will happen? Nothing will happen. What, what, what happened? They should say, I knew what happened to his dreams. Like, you know? Look what happens here. Pinesh Rashi. Rashi explains. This statement begs for interpretation. It's not possible that brothers talking here. It's prophecy talking here. Brothers are not saying a word here. And we will see what will be in his dreams. What does that mean? What will happen to his dreams? Like in future tense. Once they would kill him already, or they thought they killed him already in the pit, but all these dreams are already nullified. So what do you mean what will happen? You should say, no, what happened to his dreams? Ah, he's done. Dreams are also done. Finish, case closed. At Khan Leshono. Zera Shimshon is asking, and Rashi says, that's difficult. Kashe. Because this is the minhag way of the world. This is how the world talks. How? One person gives like a certain uh, uh, exaggeration to his friend. And he tells him what? He says, tomorrow I will make shkita to you. So the next day he sees he's already gone. He says, no, what did you speak to me yesterday? Huh? What happened to your words? He doesn't say what will happen. He says, what happened? Lomar. So, so one second. When a person says to his friend, well, tomorrow I'm going to kill you. What he says tomorrow? He says, no, what happened to your word? What will happen to your words? Like, you know, he says in future tense. No, what will happen? Same thing. Brothers also, they said to Yosef, ah, you told us about your dreams. Take it out of your please. Go take it out of your arms. Take it from me. Go. Go, Yosef. Goodbye. So he says, no, what came out of your words? What will happen now? Lomar, the answer is she ikar hadiyuk shel Rashi who the main analyzation of Rashi is midichtiv mayu chalomotau because it says what will be happening to your dreams shayalo lomar ma hayu chalomotau they should have said to him no what happened to your dreams not what will happen but what happened in the past tense el avada etzalich lomar she echal shel Yosef hayu sovrim she en mamash klab chalomotau they thought there's nothing important in the dreams there's nothing real it's all fake it's all dreams that he saw on the first two parts of the night or demons put it on his brain or he was thinking about it all day this way he saw those dreams so it's nothing there's nothing to think about those dreams or maybe he was desiring too much about this stuff and he saw in his dreams you know when you desire too many things in your heart you see this stuff in your dreams or or maybe he didn't see dreams at all he didn't dream at all he's just making up stories over here look what he says here if they would have anything any slight thought that really Yosef saw a real dream, they would never raise their finger on him. So brothers thought Yosef making up story, there's nothing there. If they would think a little bit, he sees, he saw real dreams, he would, they would never raise a finger on him. How do they know? 
אלא לפי סבדתם שיוסף הוציא דיבה רעה עליהם. They thought he's making up story just to speak bad about us. Just to make us low in front of him. Abba, we need to bow down to him. Why? Because he remained tzaddik and we became rashaim. Is that jealousy that blinded them? This is what they thought. Exactly this is what they thought. And this is why they threw him away. I'll tell you one thing. Shla Kadosh says, you have to be careful. Shla Kadosh says, you have to be careful when you humble yourself down to somebody evil. Because Yaakov Aminu made his sons bow down to Esau, they got this impurity from Esau, and they had no heart to sell their own brother. Yosef also bowed down to Esau. This is why he had no heart to speak bad about the brothers. Who did not bow down? Benjamin. This is the reason why the territory of Ben Amikdash is in his territory. Why? He never bowed down to anybody. Let's continue. We go back to Chafetz Chaim. And whoever spoke Lashon Ara, Ra'uy, whoever speaks Lashon Ra'uy, Ra'uy Lash Licho Le Kalavim, you have to throw him to the dogs. People who speak Lashon Ara, throw him to the dogs. You know what happened? They did that to Yosef. They took him out in the morning and they put, they had like 10,000 or 100,000 dogs. Yaakov had a lot of animals. So they put Yosef in front of the dogs. Yosef said, dogs start licking him, kissing him, you know. He started talking to them. They said, ah, this guy knows Torah so much. He knows the language of the dogs. So this doesn't work. We have to sell him. You know, they didn't see the truth. They shouldn't say, oh, you know what? Dogs don't touch him. Snakes didn't bite him. Uh, or he didn't die in the pit. Maybe he's tzaddik. Huh? They didn't look at the clues. That's right. You know what's funny? When Yosef invites them to the house and makes shechita for them, and he sees the doorpost is higher, they still didn't think. You know, the problem is, sometimes we think, we, we're so straight, we think, oh, my rishenia et a pravil nirishenia. Like, my decision is the proper decision in the world. Like, you know, sometimes one rabbi, it's funny rabbi, used to say, yarashayu. <laughs> it's a good thing. I mean, I'm not copying people here, but uh, sometimes it's... Uh, Unfortunately, you know, like my decision is the right one. Not always. Is it their pride? Or huh? The... No. When person, when a person deeply sees his way, it's very hard to change his way. I don't want to go into this a lot, but unfortunately, sometimes people do make mistakes. Okay. Umishumachi. Uh, I have still 30 seconds and we're almost done. Umishum Achi, and because of this, Amru, what the brother said, Lechu Venahargehu, let us go and kill him, kill Yosef. Vamarnu, and then we tell our father what? How did he die? Chayara Achalathu, wild animal, ate him. Vachalomotam, and by him, Mamash, and in his dreams, there are nothing there to worry about. Even if we wouldn't kill him, still dreams wouldn't help him. Why? Because there was no dreams. Or even if there was dreams, it was all fake. It was on the beginning of the night. Things that he was thinking about all day, just to become a president, just to become a vice president, just to become a leader, just to become a king, and there should, that we should bow down to him. Veshapir Kama Rashi Zal. And now it makes sense what Rashi said. It's not possible that they would say, Venir Emayu Chalomotau. Let's see in future what will be with these dreams. Why? Because they don't believe in these dreams. So who's talking now? Prophecy talking. The prophecy talking. If they would really say, let's see what will be happening in these dreams, then means they believed in dreams. If they would believe in the dreams, they would never touch yourself. Guys, brothers were holy people. They are tribes that we are following under. They're very holy people. If they would know one gram that the dream is real, they would never touch yourself. But, because they were in a doubt, they shouldn't have touched him. And this is what Rashi continues, since they thought they killed him and now the dreams are over. Since they thought with a full heart to kill him, since they thought to kill him, they thought, ah, his dreams are nothing. I want to tell you one thing. I want to tell you one thing. Of course, when it comes to brothers, 
relatives, a person has to be extremely gentle. To make slight mistake and cause big danger among the family, that causes Chilul Hashem in the community, or in the family itself, between nephews and cousins and brothers and sisters and that, that person has to think twice. Person has to be very careful, very gentle, very gentle. You know, sometimes you do get angry, you want to ex- express your anger, wrong, wrong. Calm it down, pray to Hashem, Hashem will help you to take care of it, to, to deal with it. To go and sometimes show off, I know, I'm smart, I know how to speak, I know how to do the actions. You see this? By accident you hurt your hand, you're not going to take a hammer and hit the, the other hand. It's a family. The whole Klal Israel is a family. You can't hurt another one. You're hurting him, you're hurting yourself. And you're hurting Hashem. Hashem says, you both are my children. What are you doing? What are you trying to do? The main thing is to make peace. The main thing is to calm down. The main thing to me, to work it out. Work it out. Make, make projects, make peace, make gathering, make, make thousand different things. Especially, especially after Corona. Guys, during the Corona, a lot of people became like, you do something slight wrong, blows up. Blows up. Why? The fear that people got through, it still didn't come out of the body. So it's looking for a place to come out like a volcano, boom, and blows out. So therefore, shh, come down the situation. Cover up with love. Cover up with the gentle situation. Cover up with friendship. Cover up only that way. Only. Only and only. And that what helps. Only happiness. And you know what I'll tell you? I'm telling you. Blame on me. Early in the morning, I used to drive to Yeshiva, five, six minutes, I would always put Dafyomi Shurim. Now I realized, if my day doesn't become, start happy, I sometimes get like, you know, upset a little bit. People get upset a little bit. So I would tell you, put some fast song, three minutes, two minutes, before you get to your shiur. Two minutes, wake yourself up. Wake yourself, start your day positive. Once you start the day positive, for any negative thing comes, you're just going to look at it. Uh, you over there, <laughs> bye. Next. Once you start positive, you good so you built your self esteem here. Now continue. Now continue. I'm sure the Israel Shemesh will keep you at least two weeks strong, but still keep it up. Keep it keep it happy. Only bring happiness. Bring happiness. Only thing. Try to cover up arguments. Never never push on the argument. Don't don't even talk to another. Don't talk to another person about the argument. Why? Because you're putting more stress in your heart. You go to sleep, but your heart doesn't rest. But I want to tell you one thing. If you saw a good dream, don't give up. Wait up to 22 years. Yosef Atzadik's good dream happened even up to 22 years. He became a king 22 years later. Let me tell you what says. Bottom line with this and finish. Me'or Veshemesh. He says psychological life lesson. Psychological. You at work. You under your boss. You under, I don't know. I don't know, workers, tenants, this, that, and they're jumping on you, and they're drilling on you. Mm. Don't say a word. You want them to bow down to you? Don't say a word now. Later on, they'll bow down to you. Who will learn this from? Yosef Atzadik. Brother telling him, yes, please, 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 please. He could say, hello, you, you, last week, you know what he did? You, three days ago, you know what he did? Five days ago. mm Quiet. Just said, please guys, give me a chance, give me a chance. No, no. That's all. He didn't speak to them. Because he was quiet, all of them who sold him, who heard him, they bowed down to him. Why? Because at the moment, he said quiet. In this world, person has stages. Sometimes you go up, sometimes you go down. When your enemy goes up on you, or some worker, anybody goes against you, don't go head on head. Why? Today, his lottery is up. He's going to be the winner either way. How Gemara says, Oy wow, no flim befanal. Yafiach, how they say, Yafiach. He could push them with a blow. They take him to the court, he wins. Gemara says, you can't do nothing. Why? Because his lottery is up. You just have to bow down your hand and be quiet. Until the time comes, and then will be the time that he's going to bow down to you. This is what we learn from Yosef Atzadik. Hashem should always give us good dreams. Person has to pray for three things. Good dream, good year, and good king. Amen. Baruch Adonai Amen, amen.